What's up everybody, my name is Drew Polk and in today's video we're going to be doing something a little bit different, something exciting. So recently I purchased these carbon clip shoes from China. These are one of the cheapest clip shoes you could possibly find. So we're going to go over these, give you my initial thoughts, then I'm going to ride in them and then do a review after. So let's get into the video. So you may be wondering why I even purchased these clip shoes, but clip shoes are pretty expensive. Some of them are upwards of $600, so obviously that's quite a bit of money. And it seems like no matter how much I spend on them, they always end up breaking. So I feel like if I'm going to break a shoe, I'd rather be a cheaper one, but I don't want to hinder my performance or have a shoe that is risky to wear. In the past, I've used many different clip shoes, one of which being Shimano. I've used the AM45 SPDs, which are an old model, the XC61s, which are also an older model, and these are the S-Fire XC9s, and the S-Fire series is one of the most popular clip shoes in the BMX community. They work really well, and these were around 260 bucks. They were super comfortable. It was a great shoe, super stiff. The only problem I had were the boas. As you can see, there's a random white boa on here, which is a tightening system. Um, I kept breaking these, not even from crashing, just from stripping out. Uh, so I had to get four replacements. But overall, a pretty good shoe, just had not the best luck with the boas. The next brand of shoes I've used are CDs, which are my personal favorites. They've been the best to me. I've used several different models, such as the Dracos, the Tigers, and the Tiger 2s. These are the Tiger 2s. They are $530, so obviously quite a price. Um, and while they're not super comfortable, they are insanely good quality. They have lasted super long. They're insanely stiff and they have their own tightening system, which is the CD system, and they've lasted really long. They've been much more durable than the Boas, so this is my personal favorite shoe I've ever used, and I'm super happy with them. Lastly, I have used the Garnets. I have also used several different styles of them, such as the G S and Xs and the G Trails. So these are the G Trails. I've actually had two pairs of these, one in red, one in white, but these are my current shoes. They were $160, so a really good price, actually but they are a little flexy, so that's not ideal, but they are insanely comfortable, and I've actually rode really well in them. I have really good times with them, so I'm happy with them. Um, they use boas as well, but I've never actually had any problems with these, so this has been an amazing shoe. So looking at the new shoe, these are from China. The only words on them are sport, so there's no brand or anything, but you can buy these for $9 in bulk from Alibaba, but I got these for $55 off of eBay. Next, I'm gonna provide my initial thoughts. First, we're gonna look at the pros. So these are very cheap. Obviously, the price is appealing, and from what I can tell, they're comfortable. I put them on. I haven't ridden them, but just putting them on, they were really comfortable. And then they're also pretty stiff, so most of us BMXers look for a stiff clip shoe so we can have good power. And then these have metal toe bolts, so you can walk on those. They're gonna be much more durable than rubber and last longer, so I'm happy with that as well. And then there's only a dual flap system. There's no tongue, so I also really like that, so you won't have a tongue getting in the way. Next, looking at the cons, the first thing I noticed is the sole is pretty poorly glued. It's pretty messy, and there's a gap in between here, so one of the concerns is the sole coming off from the shoe, which actually happened to one of my pairs of Garnets, so definitely gonna keep an eye out on that. And then next, the tightening mechanism, they say Yao on them, but they look exactly the same as Boas, so not sure about that. They are obviously not genuine Boas, but I'm wondering if Boas will fit on here. And then the last con is there's no genuine brand of these, so uh, they just say Sport on them, so it's going to be hard to get any customer service or anything like that. The next part of this video is going to be the important one. I haven't ridden with these yet, but I'm going to put these on, do some training and riding in them, and I'm going to see how these compare to my previous clip shoes. them and here are the things I found so first off I noticed they were really light they felt super light on my feet and then I also noticed they were pretty wide so if you have a wide foot this will fit a bit better um, and I think both those combined made them pretty comfortable um, and then I also noticed these ran a little big so I'm kind of an in-between size I run a 44.5 but I got these in a 45 because that's what my current shoes are 
um, but these were a little big so I would definitely recommend going smaller if you do happen to get these um, and then I also noticed I had to run the cleat really far back to feel normal so I run the cleat on the ball of my foot and they are completely slammed back and it's barely on the ball of my foot so I noticed that runs a little forward but that might be because the size is a little big so next we're gonna look at the results from training so what I did was I did half of the training with my current shoe which are the Garnet G trails and I did the other half with these shoes and then we can compare the data. Uh, we did three different training sessions. So we did downhill sprints to measure top end speed with mile per hour. And then we did some normal sprints to do some acceleration with times. And then we ended it off with some first straights at the track with some times. So starting off with downhill sprints, my current shoe averaged 34.72 miles an hour and my best was 35.1 miles an hour. And with this shoe, my average was 35 miles an hour and my best was 35.8 miles an hour. So both the average and best speeds were with this shoe. I don't think that's because this shoe provided any benefits, but I do think it allowed me to ride to my full potential. And I think the differences came just with training and riding differences. Um, and moving on to the normal sprints, my current shoe average 3.376 and my best time was 3.35 and with this shoe my average was 3.356 and my best was 3.33 so once again the average and the best time were with this shoe and again I don't think that's because the shoe was better I think I just had some inconsistencies between them and then next we went to the track and we did first straights and my current shoe average 5.024 to the first turn, and my best was 4.95, which is also my PR. And these shoes, my average was 4.98, and my best was 4.97. However, that was only out of two, because on the third first straight, this happened. <laughs> so, these shoes lasted a total of five downhill sprints, five normal sprints, and two first straights. So let that be a lesson to you. You get what you pay for. Obviously these $9 clip shoes aren't the best quality and I was even worried about the glue coming into this. I said it in the beginning and that's exactly what happened. But I had pretty high hopes for these. I thought they would last at least longer than what they did but clearly I was too ambitious. But they didn't affect my speed or my times so clearly I was able to perform well in them until they broke. <laughs> But I wouldn't recommend these to more experienced or stronger riders. Possibly if you are a newer rider or younger rider or someone who just doesn't want to spend a lot of money on a clip shoe and isn't going to be super hard on them. But for me, it didn't work. So that's the end of this video and also the end of these clip shoes because <laughs> they're broke. But I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, make sure you leave a like. Hit the subscribe button. I hope to see you all in the next video.